we're forgetting that the military ball is not just a party you are literally having dinner with your spouse's bosses in my opinion the most important etiquette rule for you to follow and be mindful of and respect is going to be the dress code and i feel like if kim kardashian a woman who's built fame and wealth off of showing off her body if she can attend the marine corps ball and give it the respect that it deserves she can fall in line with the dress code then you can too Hey guys, welcome or welcome back to my channel. If you're new here or just happening to stumble upon this video, my name is Marissa. I am a military wife, specifically a Marine Corps spouse. My husband is currently enlisted in the United States Marine Corps and I do a lot of day in the lifestyle videos, a lot of vlogs, as well as share military wife advice and encouragement. And today's video is something that I'm extra, extra excited for because if you are a fellow Marine Corps spouse, then you know our military ball is just right around the corner. It is almost a officially Marine Corps ball season and around this time of year we start to see you know all of the military ball questions what to wear what to expect military ball etiquette the dress code all those sorts of things and I thought it would be a fun idea to just kind of sit down and do a really informative deep dive into the military ball and try my best to answer all of those questions for you especially if you are a new milso getting ready for your first military ball I know that it can be very nerve-wracking a little overwhelming maybe a little bit intimidating and so my goal is to have you leaving this video feeling very well prepared well equipped that way you can attend your first military ball feeling very confident and you can just sort of relax and enjoy the evening this video will probably get a little bit lengthy because I have a lot to say I'm gonna try not to be staring down at my phone throughout the entire video but I literally have an entire document worth of notes just because I want to be sure to hit every single point I don't want to leave anything out I want this video to be very valuable and informative and I want you to again leave this video feeling very confident and knowing what to expect that being said all of my points will be organized into categories and all those categories will be time stamped down in the description box and I do want to give a little bit of a disclaimer I have only ever attended a Marine Corps ball therefore my experience is going to be limited if you have attended a ball with another military branch whether it be Army Air Force Navy whatever it might be please leave your experience and your feedback your tips your advice down in the comments I really want this to be an open conversation for us to all learn from one another and help each other out so again a lot of my tips and advice will be applicable across the board but there are going to be some specific points that are you know geared more towards the Marine Corps ball specifically but everything again will be time stamped so just check the description box and kind of navigate to what you know is applicable to your situation or you know what's relevant to you um, but just to give you kind of a glimpse into what to expect throughout this video, I'm going to give you a little bit of like an intro, just kind of a general ball information. And then I am going to be talking about specific Marine Corps traditions and the traditional significance of the Marine Corps ball. Then we're going to go into what to expect, sort of a timeline of events. And then we're going to get into the military ball etiquette, the rules. Again, I do feel this is applicable to all military balls, as well as the dress code. We're going to get really detailed and specific about the dress code. And I will also be sharing examples of military ball dresses that I have seen worn at the Marine Corps ball, as well as detailed examples of what not to wear. So I really want this to be a visual aid for you. I feel like I can, you know, talk about the dress code and talk about what's appropriate and what's not not appropriate but sometimes seeing actual examples is super helpful so I'm only going to be sprinkling in a few examples in this video however if you guys go down to the description box I will have my like to know it linked down there and I literally have an entire collection regarding the military ball on my like to know it so I have dozens of military ball dresses all styles all colors as well as jewelry accessories handbags shoes literally all the things so definitely check out my like to know it and then in the description box I will also have um, a couple articles that I will be referencing throughout this video so I just want everything in the description box easy for you to access and kind of um, navigate through as you wish now that we got all that out of the way we're just going to kind of jump right into it so for the Marine Corps specifically our balls are held around October to November it's going to depend and vary based on the unit's activity for example if a unit is getting back from a deployment or they're about to deploy or maybe op tempo is a little bit higher they might push their ball date sooner or later but generally you'll see balls being held around the October to November time frame and I do want to specify that it is each unit 
unit hosting the ball. So for example, I see a lot of new Milso's posts in spouse groups asking where the ball for Camp Pendleton is or when the ball for Camp Lejeune is. And you have to remember that it's unit dependent. So for example, there are going to be several units on Pendleton and several units on Lejeune or Quantica or 29 Palms. And so that means that each unit is having their own ball at a different date, a different time, a different location. So that's details and information that you're going to want to acquire from your marine specific command. For marines in MOS school, there typically will not be a ball in the schoolhouse. However, if the school is putting on a ball for their students, it is not guaranteed that they will be allowed to bring a date. So again, that's information you're going to want to ask from your marine specific command. But I wouldn't expect to attend a ball until they have reached their unit at their duty station. The Marine Corps ball is also generally mandatory for all Marines. This is going to be, again, command dependent as most things are. However, if the Marine chooses not to attend the ball, they will likely be required to work it. However, for you as a guest, as a date, you're not required to attend. Marines aren't required to bring a date. However, if you are invited to a military ball, I highly, highly recommend that you do attend. It's such a unique experience. You know, not many people get to say that they've been to a military ball. And I know for your first one, especially, it can be a little bit overwhelming, intimidating. You don't know what to expect. And again, that's my goal for you for this video is to leave feeling well prepared, well informed. And that way you can just kind of relax, you know, enjoy the evening and not worry so much. So Again, I really hope that this video eases some nerves and you can attend confidently. So now, in order for you to truly appreciate the Marine Corps ball, I think it's really important for you to understand the purpose and the traditional significance of the ball. The Marine Corps hosts their ball or their birthday ball in celebration of the birth of the Marine Corps, which is officially November 10th, 1775. And that's why you'll see balls being held as close to the November 10th date as possible. But at each ball, there's going to be a ceremonial cutting of the cake and the first cake slice is presented to the guest of honor and then the second cake slice is going to be presented to the oldest marine attending the ball which this is my favorite part of the night because it's always the cutest old marine and then he will then pass that same slice to the youngest marine present and I literally just got chill saying that because it's such a beautiful tradition and this passing of the cake symbolizes the passing down of Marine Corps knowledge and experience through generations of Marines. So the Marine Corps ball is obviously a very proud night for Marines. I really don't wanna to give too much away. I do wanna be informative, but I also want you to be able to experience the night on your own for the first time, You know, especially if this is your first military ball. However, the night does begin with that ceremony and then you're going to enjoy some really great and motivating speeches and then you'll be able to enjoy dinner. And then after the ceremony dinner portion, it kind of cuts into more of a social hour where you can enjoy enjoy a couple of drinks, you can dance, and then you're definitely going to be doing a lot of socializing. So be ready to kind of meet and greet. I'm sure your service member will be really excited to introduce you to their peers and their command. There will also be a photo booth. Now I don't know if it's only the balls that we have specifically attended. However, I do remember them only taking cash. So you're going to want to bring cash and a debit card. That way you're just double prepared for both photos and drinks at the bar. Now your dinner is covered in the cost of your ticket which is definitely something I should have noted earlier is that each unit will be selling tickets to attend their ball but the cost of the ticket does include your dinner so the only thing you will be paying for separately is photos if you wish which are like you know professionally taken I'm sure you guys have seen it's like that typical ball photo you so you might want that for you know memories keepsake and then again you'll be purchasing your drinks from the bar separately but dinner is included in the cost of the ticket when it comes to general military ball etiquette don't don't overthink it. It's really simple. You're just going to remember basic etiquette. Use your table manners at dinner. Be really polite. Follow your service member's lead. Um, in the ceremony portion, there will be a lot of sitting and standing and sitting and standing, and you're just going to want to kind of follow the rhythm of those around you. The service members are like well prepared. They know what to expect. They've definitely practiced it. So just pay attention. Be attentive. Don't, you know, let yourself be distracted, put your phone away, keep your phone on silent. Definitely don't take any pictures during the ceremony. The ceremony is really the most formal 
portion of the evening so you'll have time for pictures and all of that you know before and after and then when you are walking around the event whether it be to socialize or get a couple drinks from the bar whatever it might be you're not going to want to hold hands with your service member i don't know if it's only the marine corps but for marines they're not allowed to hold hands in uniform so instead what you're going to want to do is sort of link arms that way you know you can walk side by side but you're not breaking uniform etiquette and then you also want to bring a small clutch or purse you're not going to want to bring your everyday big purse or like a tote bag you're going to want something more evening appropriate but like i said you're going to be doing a lot of socializing and so you're going to want to be able to you know shake hands with the person you're being introduced to and you're not going to want to be shuffling around all of your belongings so your phone your keys your wallet things like that you're going to want to tuck away into an evening appropriate clutch and again i have some examples and it's that you can kind of sort through on my like to know it which the link for that again will be in the description box in my opinion the most important etiquette rule for you to follow and be mindful of and respect is going to be the dress code now I'm sure every military branch specifically every command is going to vary with how rigid and strict they are with enforcing the dress code However, the military ball is a formal black tie event, okay? It's a classy work event. And sometimes around this time of year, we see spouses post in spouse groups, pictures of dresses, of course, asking for opinions, seeing if it's appropriate or not. And sometimes the dress can give off the vibe that she's just getting ready to go out and party with her service members, peers, or friends. But we're forgetting that the military ball is not just a party. You are literally having dinner with your spouse's bosses. And you also never know who you will be meeting. I know Chase is always so excited to introduce me to everyone he can, but there's also been plenty of times where someone from Chase's command is excited to introduce him to someone he himself has not yet met. And in that moment, the person's first impression of Chase will now include me. And so it's important that you are always dressed appropriately, you're you know well put together, you're putting your best foot forward because you're not just representing yourself or your spouse, but you are also now representing the Marine Corps. And I actually was reading an article of an interview with a gunnery sergeant on the Marine Corps ball And I will have this article linked down in the description box But I do want to quote a few things that she said She says guests should look sharp and elegant Marines should look professional and presentable and remember that not only is the Marine representing the Marine Corps But so is their date the ball is to celebrate the Marine Corps history and traditions It shows where we started to where we are now. It gives a look at the past the present and future so of course it's so fun to get dressed to the nines and wear all the glam but you want to remember why you're doing it the military ball is a celebration but it's also a night to honor the marine corps and its accomplishments you are literally celebrating centuries of history and tradition so just be respectful of that as you plan your outfit and then of course while you're at the ball since it is a more professional setting you are going to want to steer clear of any dresses that scream prom or just look a bit more juvenile think more along the lines of formal evening attire for example male guests are expected to wear dark suit and tie or a tuxedo and then for women's dresses this is going to mean mid calf to floor length gowns even though mid calf length is appropriate for like a formal evening or a black tie event you do mostly see floor length gown so to be honest i would just recommend going all the way straight to a floor length gown but i did want to say that mid calf is appropriate if that's something you're more comfortable with but just know that most of what you'll be seeing is floor length because again the ball is a formal work event i do always recommend choosing a more modest dress i know the word modest can sometimes ruffle feathers however modest does not mean boring so don't feel like you have to pigeonhole yourself into a very simple dull boring dress you can absolutely choose a dress with more personality and flair to it i think the key is doing it in a very balanced an elegant way the golden rule that everyone will suggest is to choose one feature or asset to sort of highlight or show off so for example if you really love your back and maybe you want a really dramatic open back in your dress then choose a dress with maybe a bit more of a modest chest line or if you want to show off the decollete area then choose a dress with a bit more of a modest back so again choosing that one feature to sort of highlight and then keeping the rest of the look really balanced as for the color of your dress 
pretty much anything goes you are going to want to stay clear of any super loud bright neon colors because again it's more prom more high school more juvenile and just not appropriate for the nature of the military ball you're going to see more blacks reds navy blues metallics gold silver that sort of thing all of those colors are really appropriate and they complement the marine corps blue super well however they're also a really popular option so you might want to be mindful of that if you want to do something maybe a little bit different than what everyone else is doing or if you really want to play it safe it's probably good to know that blacks reds navy blues gold silvers those sort of colors you're going to see a lot of at the military ball now some of the more seasoned or mature spouses and i say seasoned and mature but i just mean the women who've been doing this for decades and decades they will always recommend that you steer clear of dresses with um, sequins glitter any really loud pattern however personally I find this to be outdated advice and I want to get your guys's opinion on this though I do think there was a time where this might have been true and really good advice to follow I feel like there is a right way to do it I feel like you can definitely wear a dress with patterns and glitter and sequins and still have it look really elegant and appropriate for the event the key is to do it in a balanced way so for example if you have a dress with you know all sequins out or it's patterned I think choosing a dress with maybe a more modest silhouette modest cuts just keeping the pattern or the detail sort of the main attraction and appeal of the dress I think overall balances out the look again you are going to want to avoid anything that looks a bit more juvenile or prom you're gonna to want to make sure that it is a formal evening gown I have definitely seen some really elegant women wear pattern dresses and sequins and glitter the key is again they're doing it in a balanced way a lot of the times they wear or maybe more understated jewelry or the pattern is maybe neutral colors I just I think steering clear of these things is again outdated advice I think it's all about doing it in the right way making sure that the overall look is balanced and elegant and appropriate for the nature of the military ball if you do choose glitter you are gonna want to remember to choose a dress where the glitter is like intact on the dress you don't want glitter to be shedding all over the place getting all over everyone around you or getting glitter on your service members uniforms but I think you can definitely step out of your comfort zone when it comes to choosing a dress again just making sure it fits the nature of the event no matter which color or style of dress you choose definitely make sure the dress itself is well fitted you don't want anything too uncomfortable too tight too long though you do want a floor length gown you don't want a super long train or a pool of fabric at your feet because again during the ceremony portion of the evening you're going to be doing a lot of sitting a lot of standing sitting and standing and you don't want your dress to be too tight to do that comfortably also you're going to be doing a lot of walking around and with really long trains or long dresses they always get stepped on there's going to be a lot of people walking about around you also you don't want to be stepping on it or tripping over it you don't want the dress to be damaged so just make sure everything is well fitted not too long again a floor length gown but not a pool of fabric at your feet also a good rule of thumb that I always recommend to new spouses getting ready for their first fall is if you've begun your dress searching or maybe you think you found a dress but you just happen to be second guessing don't be afraid to get the opinion of your service member they obviously know you know what the expectations are what's expected of you they also know the general attitude of their own command so they can definitely tell you if the dress is appropriate or not however if they're also second guessing don't be afraid to have them take a picture of the dress to their command and ask for their opinion because I'm sure it's going to be well appreciated that you're trying to respect the, the etiquette and the dress code and again commands may vary with how rigid they are in enforcing the dress code so don't be afraid to get a second opinion on your dress now for the fun part I'm going to be showing you guys appropriate military ball dresses and looks that you often see at the military ball specifically the Marine Corps ball these are definitely all looks that I've seen time and time again they're really classic appropriate looks they fall within the dress code and then I'm going to be showing you guys what not to wear to a military ball so again I'm only going to be showing a few examples and none of, none of these looks are like super groundbreaking I wanted you to see like a very traditional classic look especially for the new mill so again preparing for the first military ball I want you to get a good gauge of what other people are wearing again if you want to see more options more styles more colors accessories all of that that will all be on my like to know it and the link for that will be in the description box so this first look is a very classic military ball look especially the stress style you're gonna see it quite often at Marine Corps balls I think it's a really beautiful style you have the V cut for the chest you have the slit on the side however neither detail is very dramatic or overly revealing both are really well done 
overall making the look super appropriate for a military ball. I really love the reds and golds together, but you can definitely do some silver with the red. Um, because the dress is a bit more subtle, like it's very sleek, all one color, fairly simple, you can definitely play up your accessories a little bit. Don't be afraid to, um, to have fun with your jewelry, with your shoes, with your clutch. Just for example, I have it styled with a sparkly clutch. I just you know, threw on a pair of hoops and a bracelet, but you can definitely have more fun with the accessories. For the second look, I really love greens for the military ball. It's not a color I saw very often until more recent years. It's definitely become more of a trend. However, I think it complements the military blues really, really well. And it's something different than your typical reds, your blacks, your golds, your metallics, your navy blue. It's something very different. I love seeing that pop of green. And then again, I really love the green with gold. This specific dress is really beautiful. The silhouette is a bit more sleek, but you have that shoulder detail. I think this look is really, really elegant. Um, I also have more green dresses on my like to know it if you're interested in kind of swiping through, seeing what the options are. This is a really good example of maybe a more loud dress. The pattern is a bit more loud. However, it's done in neutral colors, which overall makes the look a bit more subtle, a bit more balanced, a bit more elegant. Um, because the dress is going to be a bit more loud, I definitely would understate the accessories. However, you don't have to. Don't feel afraid to step outside of your comfort zone. Again, it's just doing it in an evening appropriate way. Um, personally, I would do an all solid black clutch with this dress. I would understate it with just like, you know, a simple stud earring. Um, I would definitely play up the rings a little bit. I will wear some rings on my hand. You could definitely do a necklace, but just for example, I did the studs, the ring, the all black clutch. Very beautiful um, and appropriate look, I think. Here's another example of a sequined dress. So again, you have a bit more detail with this dress, but because it's all black all the way through, I think this is very elegant, very classy. I really love this look just as a whole. I think even though the dress has sequins, I did pair it with more of a, like a sequined clutch. I think the detail just, it just, it's so, so good. Again, you can really overplay your accessories. Don't be too afraid, especially if you have a neutral colored dress. You can definitely get away with a little bit more flair, a little bit more personality. I really think this look is really beautiful and appropriate. This dress is another um, beautiful dress style. You have the slit, you have the one shoulder. Again, neither detail is super revealing, so overall it's really well done. Super beautiful look with the gold. Again, with an all one color dress, you can definitely easily, confidently play up your accessories. That's personally what I like to do. I like to have a bit more of a simple dress, keep it all one color, one solid color, and then you can really play up your accessories. But again, you don't have to choose one or the other. It's really just personal preference. And I feel like the key is to choose a style or like an overall look that fits you, something you are confident in. Because if you try to step outside of your comfort zone a bit too much, too soon, um, it's definitely obvious. You just don't want to be overthinking your appearance the entire night. You wanna be able to feel comfortable and have fun and enjoy the evening and take pictures and you just, you know, it's important to stay true to your personal style. And then this last dress, again, is another classic dress style that you see often at the Marine Corps Ball. I think it's really beautiful. Again, um, the metallics, the golds, the silvers are um, a very popular choice, but it's something different than the reds and the navy blues that I think you see most of. So now for what not to wear to the military ball. So we're gonna go through each dress and we're gonna really, in detail, talk about what makes it not appropriate or how it might tiptoe the dress code. So this first dress, so it might be a pretty dress. It definitely screams high school prom. It has more of a juvenile look to it. Again, you're going to want to think more along the lines of formal evening gown, black tie event attire. So it's just not appropriate for the nature of the military ball. And then the second dress, um, all glittered out, it's pink. You have the slit on the leg and then you have the two side cutouts and overall it's just making it not appropriate for the nature of the event it is a bit more juvenile to, i don't want to say tacky but it's just not formal evening attire so i would pass on that and then this navy blue dress again navy blue is a really popular color navy blue itself is really appropriate and the dress would be fine however 
its length is making it a bit too casual. So if the length was taken to floor length, making the entire dress a floor length gown, this dress would be very appropriate for the military ball. So again, the length is the only problem with that one. The green dress, I again, I love green for military balls. And this dress is almost perfect. In fact, if you really wanted to, you could wear it to the military ball. The only problem with it is that really long train. So again you're not going to want anything super long mostly for comfort and honestly safety because people will be tripping over it you might trip over it the dress will end up getting damaged for that reason and that reason alone this dress would not be appropriate for the military ball really i shouldn't say it's not appropriate i just would not recommend it and then this really bright neon pink dress really the only thing inappropriate about it is going to be that bright neon color it's again giving off like high school prom really a bit more juvenile and again we're going to stick with that more evening gown black tie event attire again the military ball is a formal event so it's the color that doesn't really fit in with the nature of the military ball therefore making it not appropriate and then this last dress, very obviously not appropriate, but I really wanted to get into kind of tiptoeing the line. So this dress with the two slits on the legs and then basically a full chest reveal is just obviously not appropriate. Again, the military ball is a professional work event. Kim Kardashian attended the Marine Corps ball one year and this is what she wore. And I feel like if Kim Kardashian, of all people, a woman who's built fame and wealth off of showing off her body, if she can attend the Marine Corps ball and give it the respect that it deserves she can fall in line with the dress code she follows the golden rule where she's only choosing one asset to show off i feel like if kim kardashian can do it then you can too it is literally only one night where you're asked to put your you know your best foot forward dress appropriately you don't ever want to be the one to tiptoe the line around the dress code i know we see again those posts and spouse groups with dresses that might tiptoe the line and i feel like there's always that one woman who comments oh i've seen worse just wear it but you are literally again having dinner with your spouse's bosses you never know who you'll be meeting and just because someone has worn worse doesn't mean that you should also tiptoe that line with all that being said you guys this is going to be the end of the video i really hope that you guys enjoyed it again if you have attended a military ball with another branch or even the marine corps ball please leave your personal experience your best tips your advice all the goodness down in the comments. I really want this video to be an open conversation so that we can all learn from one another, encourage each other, help each other out. Again, I have only ever attended a ball with the Marine Corps and I'm also only one person, so I can only share my personal perspective and experience. So I definitely wanna hear from the rest of you. But with all that being said, guys, give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. Don't forget to check out the description box for a link to my Like to Know It with a plethora of dress styles to choose from also every dress is from a website with like a million other options so definitely shop around scroll through i have shoes accessories handbags all things military ball on my like to know it um what else oh also the articles that i referenced will be in the description box just so you can read a bit more on the marine corps ball the military ball etiquette all that and i think that's it so give this video a thumbs up subscribe if you guys haven't already and i will see you in the next one mm -hmm.